Are you stuck replaying the same negative thoughts and feelings? Does it feel like you're in this rut of just replaying the same thing over and over? And no matter what you do, you can't get out of those cycles of thoughts and feelings and behaviors. Have you been doing everything you can to change your subconscious mind? Because you know that's that's the secret. We need to change your subconscious, but you're having little or maybe even moderate success? Well, that's going to change today. I'm going to show you why that is and how to change that and, and what the real process is to reprogram that, uh, that subconscious mind, get out of those ruts, stop repeating those negative thought and emotional cycles. Now, to do that, we have to start with what creates the subconscious mind because that's in essence why you're stuck repeating these patterns, okay? So how does our subconscious mind come about? How does it develop? Well, it develops in the last trimester of pregnancy to the first seven years of our life. I want you to think of it like this. You're a computer, but most computers come with software pre-installed. Well, we have none, none of it. We're this blank computer with nothing in it. And so that first seven years of life, all of the programming gets placed into us and it gets placed into us primarily by our caregivers. And here's the secret. This is why all of the process you're using to try and change your subconscious and get out of this rut aren't quite working. What gets placed into our subconscious is emotionally deep events. That's what our subconscious is. That's what our programming is because we don't have cognition. We can't cognitively assess things till seven years old. So everything we're downloading are deep emotional experiences. And this you're gonna see is critical. It's critical to understand, it's critical to, critical to face and address, and it's the reason why all of the other thought-based ideas that you're pursuing aren't working. Because the first thing to recognize is that's emotion, not thought. Now, why is that so critical? Well, the first thing to recognize is studies overwhelmingly show, like it's been proven this isn't debatable. It, we now show that at least 70% of all of that programming we get from our parents, brothers, sisters, coaches, teachers, all the programming that we get throughout our first seven years of life, 70% of it is negative, it's disempowering and even self-sabotaging. So that's, and now do you hear, when you hear those words, negative, disempowering, self-sabotaging, can you feel that experience? 70% of the information downloaded into us was negative emotional experiences. Not because our parents, teachers, brothers and sisters are bad people, but for centuries, we haven't taught how to be a parent, we haven't, you know, we've always downplayed emotions and said thought is everything. It's not even how our brain and body works. We feel before we think. Antonio Damasio has shown that, that we're constant. This is another problem is people think we think first. We don't. We feel first. All right. And we're feeling from that subconscious programming. That's what's generating the thoughts. Okay. I'll get into more of that in a minute. Now, why is it critical? that we understand that 70% of our subconscious programming comes from our childhood and the negative messages we were sent. Well, here's why. Because we are underdeveloped emotionally as a child, because we don't have emotional mastery, and, and let's face it, again, almost none of us pursue emotions. We've all been told they're bad, wrong, don't deal with them, and be emotionless and all of that. Society has sent this message to, you know, that's really, emotions are bad. Well, because we can't process the emotions and because most of them are negative, now it's irrefutable as well in science. It's proven that if you're an adult, 95% of your life, you're not even present for. You're on autopilot. You, I know you're sitting there going, that's not true. I know what my thoughts and decisions are. I'm present all day, every day. Uh, this That just can't be true. I'm not on autopilot. I know what I'm doing. Well, I'm going to show you that we don't. I'm going to prove it to you how we're all stuck reliving the subconscious programming. And that's why you watch this video because you're stuck. You're replaying. And I'm going to show you the proof of that. 
But even more importantly, I'm going to show you how to get unstuck and what the real process is. Okay. So part of the reason the thought-based programs don't work is it's an emotional experience. And the way our brain formed, it formed in three sections. First was instinct, intuition, then emotion, and then cognition. Well, we're feeling before we're ever thinking, yet 95% of our life, we are dissociated out of reality. Remember, 70% is disempowering. Because of the emotional experience, we don't have the ability to process it. We don't have emotional mastery. We then dissociate. That's the 95%. What that means is dissociation is picture this. When I'm associated, when I'm in my life, I'm in my body. I know exactly what's going on. I'm consciously aware. Well, because 70% of our experience is negative, we dissociate. We leave our body. That's why we're stuck replaying all of these things that have happened in our past. All of these childhood moments that were disempowering. That's also something called complex PTSD. Now, I know you're going, oh, I don't have PTSD. I wasn't in the war. Well... Let me show you what complex, what creates complex PTSD, because we have a big misconception about trauma. People think, you know, painful childhood experiences are, you know, severe beatings, abuse, things like that. I'll show you ex a, a simple example of what creates complex PTSD and how this will probably resonate in your own life. Did your parents ever roll their eyes at you or ever go, oh my God, you're driving me crazy? Can you remember those moments? Can you still feel them? You probably do, right? That, that shaming of us, that disavowing of us, because can you see that as a child, when our parent says, you're driving me crazy, what does that mean? That means, oh my God, I have the power to make my parent go crazy, which means they may end up in a hospital, which means I have nobody to take care of me. Now, I know as an adult, you're like, oh, Kenny, you're exaggerating. That isn't true. Well, this is what happens to a child. And that's proof of how dissociated you are from that moment. And I'm going to prove it to you. Stick with me. I'm going to show you how dissociated you are from that moment and stuck in that PTSD and in that 95% on autopilot. Okay. Those little moments, those little comments, the rolling of the eyes, the disempowering things that we go through in childhood, those are what are running our life. And here's the next bit of truth to prove that to you. It's also how our brain works. It takes tremendous energy for our brain to do anything. 25% of all the calories we take in during the day go to feed our brain. And so because it takes our brain so much effort to work, it's figured out a solution. You know what it is? It relies on that subconscious programming to repeat what it knows. It just keeps firing. And that's why whenever you go to change or do something new, you feel uncomfortable. Your brain goes, ah, oh, I don't have the energy for this. Let's go back to what we know. Let's keep picking that abusive partner, the bad boss, bad job, all these different things. Let's stay stuck, depressed, repressed. Uh, anxious. I don't want to go to the doctor. No, I don't want to. I don't want to find out what the problem is. Because our brain is scared to death of that. It's trying to repeat what it knows. Okay. That's further proof of how this works. So now the next question is, how did this cycle start? How does it, how are we caught in this? Well, that's what I developed. I called it the worst day cycle. And I wrote about it in my book, Your Journey to Success. And I lay out the whole process. And I've never heard or seen anyone in this industry, counseling or otherwise, talk about this from an emotional based perspective. They dip into it, but they still try and get thought to fix the problem. Well, that's not the solution. The solution is in our feelings. And I'm going to walk you through that process so you can start switching to the real process to change it. Because remember, how is it imprinted in us? It was imprinted in us in an emotional experience. So how do we change the subconscious programming, we have to change the emotional experience. We can't do that with thought. We have to have, because here's what happens in those emotional moments when our parents rolled their eyes, when they said we were driving them crazy. It created a massive chemical explosion in our brain and body that our brain and body gets addicted to. That's what creates the subconscious programming. It's an emotional experience. It also creates something called a neural pathway. And so this neural pathway is why you're repeating all of this stuff. Remember, the brain seeks to repeat what it knows. 
It wants to conserve energy. And so that's why you're on this continual loop. Now, I know most of you are going, well, I'm not on a loop. I'm conscious. I'm not repeating behaviors. This is just something new I'm stuck in. And well, I'm going to show you how you're repeating and, and how you're dissociative and how you're not present in your life and how you're stuck repeating the pain from your childhood. And this is how I'll prove it to you. The first step in this process to reprogramming the, the subconscious mind and getting out of dissociation and the PTSD is go to Google. Do you see this? Type in feelings list. Print this off. It's a feelings wheel. Now, here's the other thing. Studies show 70% of people um, don't even know what they feel. That's part of the dissociation. All right. We can't feel. All right. So most people are going to only going to be able to start with this first inner circle where it talks about, I'm, you know, I'm happy, sad, angry. That's the level of detachment that they have from their, their life. The next circle gets deeper and the outer layer, these are the real deep feelings. These are what you experienced in those disempowering moments in childhood. Okay. And eventually you're going to get a, enough consciousness and awareness to get out to that. But for right now, start with that. Print off that feelings list. And this is the process to start shifting that subconscious programming and get unstuck. Five times a day, grab this feelings wheel and look at it and go, what am I feeling? What am I feeling? Just simply. Any time of the day, it doesn't matter. Just check in. What am I feeling? The first thing we have to do is start getting us aware of our feelings again because we're so dissociated and numb and blank. And so that's the first to do that for a couple of days. Now the next step is check in five times a day. What am I feeling? Then ask yourself, where in my body do I feel it? Now, why is this important? Well, all of those disempowering moments we experience in childhood, whether they were severe trauma or just those little things where our parents were perfectly imperfect and said negative stuff, we store all emotional pain in our body. Not in our head, not in our brain, not in our thoughts. It's a body felt experience. And that's why people can't feel. They're detached, dissociated from their body. And so generally, almost always with clients, I ask them, you know, so how do you feel about that? And they'll tell me a story. Well, it's just so frustrating. I come on, I've told him for years what it is I want to make me happy and he just won't do it. So when he won't do it, how do you feel? Well, just like the other day, I walked in and there he was again. I told him I wanted him to check in with me. See, she's telling me the story. And eventually I have to go, yes, but what's the feeling? If somebody doesn't pay attention to you, what do you feel? And they can't get to it. Well, let's look at it. What if somebody isn't paying attention to me? I would feel humiliated, mad, frustrated distant, dismissed, infuriated. That's what we need to get out of the dissociation and start addressing the PTSD. We need to get back into that felt experience. That's the first, those are the first two steps. What am I feeling? Where in my body do I feel it? Now, we're, I'm going to prove that you've been repeating this cycle and your subconscious processing your whole life and 95% of your life, you have never been present and you've been stuck in complex PTSD and dissociated from your life. And this is also why thoughts won't resurrect you out of this. Now, once you've identified that feeling and you've recognized where it was in your body that you're feeling it, ask yourself, what's my first memory of having this feeling? And let's say you're in your early 40s. Most people are going to remember something from their 30s, maybe a divorce, maybe a job, something happened there. Write it down, catalog it, what happened. Then ask yourself, okay, what's my next memory before that? Probably be something in your 20s, something that happened that's similar, had the same feeling, same place in your body. Then write it down, what's the next one? In your teens, keep going. Eventually, you're going to find something early in your childhood where it was the first time. Now, for most people, they have no memory of their childhood. And that's also proof of the dissociation, that they're not present in their life. They shut it off. They didn't have the emotional ability to process the event, and so they left themselves. That's the complex PTSD. So if you don't have childhood memories, that's why. So most people that don't have childhood memories, 
what they'll tell me is something along the lines of, well, I don't remember specifically, but at this age, that feeling is strong. Okay. Now it's not critical that you remember the specific incident that happened at one, two, five, eight, ten 10 years old. What matters is the origination point. That's the programming. That's the original less than nurturing event that happened to you that's been running your life and you just proved it. You're stuck in the worst day cycle. You're stuck replaying your subconscious. You haven't been present for the last 30 years of your life. You're repeating it over and over and over and over and over. Now, the beauty of this is most people, well, the sad part of this is most people will feel tremendous shame at that truth. Oh, God, I don't want to admit that. Well, why? Where in your body do you feel it? Trace it back and you're going to see the reason that's so scary to you is at some point in your childhood, you didn't have the answer. You were wrong. You were imperfect. And your parents, caregivers, friends, brother, sister, teacher, coach sent the message. There's something defective about you. And that's why you're resisting this new information and the solution. That shame is stuck in you. That's the proof that you're in P complex PTSD, dissociated from your life. Your subconscious has run your life and you're in the worst day cycle. There it is. You have it all laid out. Now, the beauty of it is now you have the map of how your subconscious has run your life and, the, and what we need to heal and reorient it. And how do we reorient it? We need to have a massive emotional experience. Just throwing thoughts at it won't work because what created the subconscious, massive emotional experiences, right? Deep emotional events. And I just proved it to you. You're still reliving those emotional events in your 40s, 50s, 60s, however old you are. So what we need to do is shift that emotional experience. Don't throw thought at it. Throw emotion at it. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. So now we're in reality of what's causing all of our problems. Now we need the solution of how to turn it around. Well, I, there's one other step to the problem that we need to address. In that moment as a child and throughout those moments, you developed a mantra. So like for me, when, with my dad, um, the, the mantra I developed, you know, I wanted to step up and defend myself, but I go, what's the point? Doesn't matter anyway, because I knew I was disempowered. I knew there was no way my dad was going to let me win and prove that I was right. I have another client, his, his uh, mantra is F it. When stress comes on and things start happening in his life, he goes F it and he just runs, runs from his life. Okay, so what, what's the mantra? Now you're gonna see, you repeat these negative mantras every time. Oh, nobody cares. Nobody loves me, it just doesn't matter. I'll never get better anyway. That's, and so they're trying to get you to change that thought which is okay. But unless you change the emotional event, you can't change the thought. We need to change the emotional event to create a new mantra that works against it. Reprogram the subconscious mind. So that's what happened in that as a child, you were young, you had the emotional event as you got cognition, then you created the story, the thought that goes with it. That's why thought can't get you to the solution because you didn't have thought as a child. All you had was emotion. We need to fix the emotion, not the thought. When we fix the emotion, the thought will change. Antonio Damasio has shown we feel before we ever think. Our subconscious is feeling for us. And then we're putting thought. Cognition is meant to be a support system. It's not meant to lead. Our brain formed in three sections. Instinct, intuition first, emotion second, cognition third. Cognition is not meant to run our life and most programs try and get you to run from here. We need to get back here. This is the essence of who we are. You've had that experience when you're in the flow, when you're in the zone. It's an instinct and emotional process. You're free of thought. That's why mindfulness won't work. You have to get reconnected to this. Mindfulness doesn't show you how to do that because they're getting you to focus on thought. You have to heal and reconnect instinctually and emotionally. And that's what this process does for you. Okay. Now let's move on to the healing part of the journey, the recovery process. The first step in that is grief. In those moments in childhood, we were not allowed to grieve it. We were not allowed to move through that pain and it stuck. Most children were told, don't cry. Come on, be strong. 
fuck up, kid. Boom, we had to suppress it. Those mantras became the suppre the emotional suppressant. And this is what causes anxiety, depression. That's why pills don't work on those. It's an emotional experience that hasn't been dealt with in childhood. It's been suppressed with mantras and we pushed it all down. And we never grieved that emotional experience and that program still running, all of that pain is going. So what we need to do is give ourselves permission to grieve. Now, most people can't even cry. That shows, again, the PTSD and the dissociation from their life. They're not present. If you can't cry, my heart breaks for you. That's how painful those moments were for you and how you left your body and left presence and have been stuck all of your life, not present in your life, reliving the worst day cycle, reliving the subconscious programming of less than nurturing parenting and moments in your life. Tears are meant to move past the pain. That's why children cry nonstop. Children cry, 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 cry. That's our natural state. It's healthy. It's how we move through emotion. We must grieve through tears. That's the first step, is sit in the emotions. Now we need to look at our list here, how we felt insignificant, excluded, persecuted, inferior, inadequate. My God, do you feel how overwhelming those feelings are? And for a young child, give yourself permission to experience those feelings and grieve them. That's step number one. The next step is empathy. Empathy for ourselves and for our parents or whoever the person was that implanted these painful emotional experiences into our subconscious. They didn't want to do this. They were just doing the best we can. Remember, society has never taught anything about emotions or parenting. They're doing the best they can. And so it's empathy of mom, dad, brother, sister, coach, teacher. I know you're trying to love me. I know you were trying to do the best you could. And I know I was trying to do the best I could. See, it's empathy for both. We were just stuck. We didn't have the knowledge. We didn't have the expertise. Neither one of us are to blame. I wish it could have been different for both of us in that moment. Do you hear the kindness in that? The emotional shift of that instead of the anger and resentment? We're going to get to healing the anger and resentment in a minute. But that's the first step is love for ourselves and love for the other person. Now we're going to take the first step to shifting the emotional programming that's stuck in our subconscious that created the neural pathway that's kept us in PTSD, CPTSD and dissociated from our life. First piece of this is remember we felt it in our body and here's why it's critical. Remember I said we store all trauma physically in our body. We're going to take the first step to release that from our body. All right? Go to that emotional experience. Say it was in your heart. Feel with as much feeling as possible. You're taking that shame, that blame, that persecution, all of those hurtful feelings, and you're going, you're pulling it out of you. Like create a deep emotional resonance to the extraction of that feeling and kindly and lovingly go, mom, dad, brother, sister, I love you, but this isn't mine. I'm done. I've been stuck for 40 years carrying your pain. Not anymore. This is yours. I give it back to you. Can you feel, feel the lightning of yourself as you re remove that from you, whether it's your brain, wherever you're holding it, give it back to them. Hold them accountable. That's love. This isn't denigrating our parents or shaming them. Love is holding people accountable. It's saying what you did was perfectly imperfect and it was hurtful and I won't carry it for you anymore. Okay? The next step. Now we have to reclaim our authentic self. See, in those traumatic moments since we were an infant without the use of language, without the use of thought, even if it was something older in our teens, we were also at our parents' mercy. We had to suppress, repress, deny, minimize, shut down who we were. The loss of self happens at that point. We dissociate, go into CPTSD. We live a blank, 
life of repeating the pain from our past, the worst day cycle over and over and over. We need to reclaim our authentic self that was there, that was came into this world open and loving and kind and welcoming, healthy programming that empowered us to reach our full self. And the first step to doing that is anger work. We need to defend ourselves. And so what we do is I suggest everyone write rage letters. Now, these aren't things you mail, but these are letters that are filled with all of these difficult feelings of feeling neglected and it's you son of a blank. I can't believe you freaking did this to me. How dare you abandon me? You mother, like you let it go. It's ugly. It is rage based. It is filled with judgment, filled with anger, filled with all the cuss words you go, because here's why it's important. Most people, oh my God, I don't want to talk about my parents or these people this way. Well, remember what we couldn't do as a child. No, no, don't treat me that way. We had to suppress, we had to go into really three phases. Either most of us went into flight, freeze, or fawn. That's the dissociation. Some kids became, you know, <coughs> bullies and fought back, but it was from a fear place. It wasn't from a defensive place, a truly healthy preservation. They felt so much freeze or flight that they raged, but it wasn't healthy rage. We're programming in the healthy sense of no, no, no more, no. And so we write that rage letter out. <clears throat> now, remember, we store our trauma physically in our body. So we need to switch that memory too. We need to reprogram the body. And so to do this, take a baseball bat, golf club, punching bag, Take that rage letter and out loud scream and yell and beat the hell out of the bed. If you don't have something like that, get in your car. Destroy that steering wheel. Let it out physically. And as you're doing it, you're going to see. You're going to start losing steam. It's going to start dissipating out of you. And you know what you're going to feel? Light. Free. Space. You're clearing away the subconscious programming, all the thoughts and feelings from all of those moments that we've now tracked that we can go back and work this process on. We're now clearing all of that away. And what do we need to do next? We need to replace it with something that is empowering, something that's a true reflection of our authentic self, of who we've always wanted to be in our life. We need to create a massive chemical explosion. Remember, that's what this whole process is. I'm creating, do you see how I'm creating all of these emotional chemical explosions to rewire that subconscious, to give it a whole new orientation, all right? So what's the next step? Well, <clears throat> to create that new neural pathway, a neural pathway that gets us unstuck, that works for us, not against us, we need to picture a person, place, or thing that represents us. Who are we in that moment? Save. And now, get to the feelings list. We want to feel a sense of a person that's free, curious, inquisitive. See, if we're stuck, we don't have curiosity. We're not inquisitive. Successful, confident, respected, valued, courageous, creative, loving, thankful, sensitive, intimate. Do you hear the power in those words? Now, one of my clients, what he, the, the image that he created was the redwood trees in California. You know, the, the, they're just massive. You can drive a car through them. They're huge. It's this incredibly vibrant, strong, powerful force in the world that can't be taken down. Even if you chop out half of the bottom, it'll last for hundreds, thousands of years. And then the leaves, as they fall off, that's all the pain, the subconscious stuff dropping. And it's renewed through this process of strength and power. That's how we replace it. And the key, again, is feel it. Did you hear the energy with which I said all of those words? And you have the image of this is now me at 2, 4, 8, 10, whatever the experience was, 20 years old, 30 years old. 
I am strong. I am powerful. I am unstuck. I am unstoppable. That's an emotion. That's us. That's the us we were meant to bring into the world. That's the subconscious that we need to create that's available to all of us. And do you feel it? That's emotion. That's strength and power and love for ourselves. That's what we need, not a silly thought. Because most of us say those thoughts and go, I don't believe it. Yeah. I'm not real. I don't really love myself. Oh, why? Where do you feel that? What's that feeling that doesn't quite believe it? Disbelief. Where do you feel it in your body? What's your first memory of feeling that feeling? Trace it down till you get to the beginning. Boom. Oh my God, right there. Mom and dad didn't believe in me. Just found the program. Work the process. Work the solution. Grieve it. Empathy for both yourself and them. Give it back to them. Hold them accountable from a loving place. Work through the rage process. Make a rage letter. Express it physically. Replace it with the true authentic sense of who you are in the final piece. Forgive yourself. From this place with this new authentic piece in place, now we can look back and go, my gosh, I have been in CPTSD all my life. I have been dissociated just like the science shows 95% of my life. I've been replaying the subconscious programming from the less than perfect, less than nurturing parenting and childhood experiences that I went through. And it's okay. How could I not? We've never taught this. I've never even had the opportunity to do anything else. I did the best I could. And man, look at how far I've gotten with all of that against me. Look at all I've accomplished. I'm okay. I'm a great man. I'm a great woman. And now I believe it because I've worked through the worst day cycle process. I have healed my subconscious. I have reprogrammed it. I have changed from who I used to be, from the perfect and perfect messages that were implanted into me. I have switched them and changed them and I have reclaimed my authentic self. I am alive. I am free, I am powerful, I am kind, I am loving. That's the way to heal all of this, to get unstuck, to stop the, the, the cycles, to change the subconscious. It's a feeling-based process where cognition is used to support it. It's not cognitive-led. And once you do this work, now if you try and do mindfulness, it'll explode. Most of you won't even have the chatter anymore because all that chatter is PTSD stuff, dissociation. You'll be very quiet. Now, when you do breath work, these are all suggestions. Most people, their programs rely on that. But once you do this, your ability to breathe and everything, because you're no longer in fight or flight, you're no longer dissociated, your breath work, everything, your life just takes off. And this process happens immediately. This doesn't take long for you to feel an immediate shift. Like every single client, everybody I've ever worked with, they feel this process immediately. Now the key is you have to remember, you, you spent years replaying this cycle. You're going to have to spend some time creating this new neural pathway and imprint, imprinting all of these new subconscious programs. All right? I used to schedule it every day to go through the grief process, every aspect of my life. I made it part of my daily life. And that's what we have to do if we want our life back. It does require work, but that's how you get your life back. And that's how you change your life and live the life you were meant to live. So I hope you choose it. I hope you choose to do the work because you deserve it. You don't deserve to stay stuck in that pain. You deserve to be free and happy and healthy. And this is your way out.